In 1903, the state of Pennsylvania created a commission to determine how many of those residing in the state suffered from mental illness. Unfortunately, back then, there was much to learn about persistent mental afflictions, and many of those who suffered had found their way into hospitals and prisons. To alleviate pressure on the prison and hospital systems, a new dedicated hospital was established where people who suffered from mental illness or physical disabilities could be properly cared for. This was a great idea on paper, but as it turns out, not so much in practice. The project would result in the construction of a facility that represented an incredibly dark and deeply shameful chapter in the history of Pennsylvania, as well as the country at large. Coincidentally, the building would come to be regarded as one of the most haunted places in the world. At the time of its construction, the Penhurst State School and Hospital was located in a desolate area. The intent was to keep separation between patients and the rest of society, as they claimed, for safety. Patients at Penhurst were given jobs at the facility and were subject to unpaid and, in some cases, reportedly harsh labor conditions. They made mattresses and shoes. They farmed, they baked, and helped with facility upkeep. Penhurst was its own self-contained community. It even had its own railway station, where coal and other supplies were delivered. The tracks are still there today. The first patient was admitted to Penhurst on November 23, 1908. The hospital was designed to accommodate 500 patients. However, just four years later, there were more than 2,800 patients living full-time at the facility. In addition, its focus on both mental and physical rehabilitation had become muddied. Penhurst was now home to immigrants, orphans, and even dangerous criminals. As more and more patients were being admitted, absent allocations of extra funding or extra staff, the situation quickly began to deteriorate. Penhurst's chief physician once inferred that every person with mental illness is a potential criminal. He was referencing the work of Henry H. Goddard, who was a leading eugenicist at the time. But this was implicit of the dark and antiquated mindset of the facility's leadership. Patients that misbehaved or rebelled against the substandard conditions were placed in solitary confinement an often brutal punishment for people afflicted with mental illness. Some patients would purposefully injure themselves so that the staff would be forced to let them out of isolation. Tied patients would often try to bite abusive staff members, presumably in self-defense. Those patients would have their teeth removed. Dr. Jesse G. Fear was an on-staff doctor infamously known for brutally abusing patients. He would torture the helpless with painful and unnecessary intravenous injections. He would direct staff to house passive patients with violent criminals, studying their sometimes fatal interaction. Under his supervision, Dr. Fear would build an abhorrently abusive culture within the hospital walls, establishing patients as nothing more than lab rats. Dangerous physical and mental testing would be carried out on patients, some resulting in, quote, accidental death. Decades later, stories of the atrocities that precipitated at Penhurst would finally leak. In 1968, a reporter named Bill Baldini received a tip from a remorseful staff member and would produce a groundbreaking five-part television news report exposing the truly horrific conditions at Penhurst. The public was outraged. Front page newspaper articles referred to Penhurst as the shame of Pennsylvania. Baldini's reports were a major blow to the reputation of Penhurst and would signal the beginning of the end for the storied hospital. But the final nail in the coffin was hammered in by one of the patients years later, a woman named Terry Lee Halderman, who was allowed to leave the facility for a weekend to visit her parents. Halderman returned home that weekend battered, bruised, and said to be missing teeth prompting her parents to file a very public lawsuit against the facility. The Halderman's victory would lead the court to mandate the total shutdown of Penhurst in 1987.
the remaining 1,156 patients who were still there were moved into different community homes, many with far more favorable conditions than that of Penhurst. The case of Halderman versus Penhurst became known as the Penhurst Doctrine and is now binding precedent under U.S. constitutional law. To this day, it is unknown just how many patients died at Penhurst, but paranormal enthusiasts who have visited the site in the years since its closure have said that the pronounced energy of those trapped patients still persists. Penhurst State School and Hospital is said to be among the most haunted places in the world. According to historians and paranormal researchers, perhaps the most famous ghost of Penhurst is an entity nicknamed the King. He is believed to be a maintenance man who worked at Penhurst during the 1940s and the 50s, presumably witnessing the height of patient abuse at the facility. The entity's domain is said to be the boiler room in the basement of the Mayflower building. He is said to appear as a shadowy figure, but some have said that he can even touch and choke people who dare to set foot in the boiler room. It is said that one can smell cigar smoke when he appears. Paranormal enthusiasts often bring cigars and cigarettes down to the boiler room in order to try to incite an appearance of the apparition. Others avoid the boiler room altogether, preferring not to tempt fate. The King is one of many ghosts said to be haunting Penhurst, and the Mayflower Building in particular is thought to be a central hotspot of paranormal activity. Visitors to the building in its abandoned state say that they were overwhelmed by feelings of dread and sadness as soon as they stepped inside. Visitors report instances of slamming doors, hearing footsteps, and the sound of someone vomiting. Some have reported eerie 1940s era music. Some people have heard disembodied voices telling people to go away, threatening them, or asking for help. The Quaker Building is said to be another paranormal hotspot. Some have reported seeing dark figures and a plainly visible ghost of a girl with long black hair and strange dangling arms. Visitors have been pushed and scratched by unseen forces and have even had things thrown at them. Since its closure in 1987, the facility's dark past has been reframed by an appreciation for its architectural beauty and haunted history. While much of the facility has fallen into disrepair, parts of the campus have been restored or maintained and play host to paranormal enthusiasts and those that are curious to attend a nighttime ghost hunting tour. There have been plans made to repurpose the land and other parts of the campus over the years, but nothing has moved forward. For now, it seems as though the old Penhurst State School and Hospital may be destined to live out the rest of its days as a haunted attraction visited only by curious investigators, and inhabited only by the spirits of the patients who died there. My name is Scott, and thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans, creating documentary-style content for those who share our curiosity, ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, leave a comment, and give this video a like. And to be notified when we post new videos, hit that notification bell. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. And for exclusive merchandise, visit our website at www.mysterysyndicate.com. Whether or not you believe in ghosts, monsters, or legendary creatures doesn't matter here. Just believe in the possibility. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.